There's something about driving a European sports car that's simply an exhilarating overload to the senses. First, of course, is the sound of the engine revving up on acceleration, a sound that puts a smile on the face of any gearhead. Second is the smell of an internal combustion engine doing what it does best, burning rubber and propelling you along at speeds that the local law enforcement would not take too kindly to. Then, of course, is the sight of the sleek and curvaceous body lines, and finally, the touch of the leather on every side as you sit in the driver's seat watching the world zoom past. The Ferrari 360 Spider fulfills every one of those four senses, which is one of many reasons it was one of the Prancing Horse's most successful models. The first 360 model to come out was the Modna, or the Coupe, and that was released in 1999. Then, at the Geneva Auto Show in 2000, Ferrari released the 360 Spider, and overall, worldwide, they made 8,800 of the Modna, or the Coupes, and just over 7,500 of the Spiders. They were very successful selling cars. Uh, they have great power, they're pretty lightweight, and they have just under 400 horsepower, 395 horsepower. They sound amazing. A red line of 8,700 RPM, and they go zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. So they are quick, they are beautiful, and I don't blame people for making them one of the more popular Ferrari models. Now, 360, the name, I always find Ferrari's naming system pretty interesting. And if you've been a subscriber for a while, you've heard me go over how they name stuff before. So the 360, like many models, the first two numbers dictate the engine. So it's 3.6 liters. Uh, however, sometimes for I can't figure out what to do with the last letter. So for instance, in the 348, it's 3.4 liters, eight cylinders. Then they did the 355, which is 3.5 liters, five valves. Now for the 360, which is an eight cylinder, they didn't do 368, they just threw a zero on the end and called it a day, because why not? Ferrari did design the 360 uh, with a Spider variant in mind. So even though they came out with the coupe first, they did like make the car a little more rigid just to make sure that when they made it into a convertible, it wouldn't have too much body flex. So basically, when you chop the top off a car, you lose a lot of the integrity of the car and you need to reinforce it in other places to make sure that you're not gonna get too much body flex and uh, movement you don't want. That's not good when driving. So, and plus they also do some stuff to help reduce noise because in a coupe, uh, it's much easier to make sure that um, you don't have the internal, the cabin noise like you would with the Spider. So a couple things they did, first for safety, the windshield surround and uh, is reinforced and in the back they added two little roll hoops, roll bar hoops. Uh, and then also just for overall rigidity, they did stiffen up the front of the floor pan a bit and the sides a bit just to help make sure that you don't, you know, you, the driving experience is still up to par with Ferrari standards. And they also reinforce the bulkhead to cut down on that engine noise that you might get more of once the top comes off. So uh, they, they designed this car to be a great driver even with the convertible. So you don't have that extra worry about the body flex and the noise and the stuff that sometimes does come with convertibles. Plus, they finally figured it out with the 360 tops because the old tops, like 355s, were incredibly known for being just horrible. <laughs> Not only do they break constantly, but the 355 tops are just so hard to put up and down. I mean, this one, you get in it, you start the car and you push a button and it flops up and goes down and folds right away, which is awesome. But on the 355, you... <laughs> You have to get in the car, put your foot on the brake, put, make sure to close the door. Cause one time I'm trying to roll, you know, put the top down and I left the door open and it wasn't working and it was a mess, but uh, close the door, push the seats forward, roll the windows down, unlatch the top, push it halfway back. And then you can press the button to have the convertible top go back if it works. But on a 360, it's so much simpler. So uh, I really like how 
they do the tops in these. They, they got a system down and it, it works really well. The Ferrari 360 has just about everything going for it. It's obviously a stunning design, but besides just its beauty, Ferrari, in partner with Alcoa, produced an entirely new all-aluminum space frame chassis, which is 40% stiffer than the 355, which had utilized steel. The switch to aluminum made the 360 28% lighter, despite a 10% increase in overall dimensions. One of the things that really stuck out in people's minds when the 360 was released was the glass panel in the back where you could see down into the incredible Ferrari engine. And I mean, you gotta love it. When that design was first released, I was young, but I still remember seeing one and being like, oh my goodness, that is awesome. And when they designed the spider version, they had to make sure to keep that panel there and the you know iconic look of the back of the 360, but still have the convertible top fold down. So basically this whole panel right here will pop up and the convertible top folds really nicely just in this section right here and it'll close back down and it makes it so the top folds back into its own little cover. You don't need a tonneau cover or anything else, but you still get the full glass panel with no interruptions and you know no cut corners. So I love that they were able to design it like that and keep that so you get kind of the best of both worlds where you still get the glass panel and the enjoyment of top-down driving. I do love the interior accents in this particular 360. So when I was first told that it had red accents, sometimes that can be quite loud on cars, but I really like on this one, how it has the red accents with the black interior and the red piping on the seats. I just feel like it's a nice contrast. It's not too much, but it still stands out enough to kind of be like, ooh, wow, you know, that's different and that's cool. So I really love that. And then 360s in general and a lot like the 550s, a lot of the Ferraris, they, <laughs> they have an immobilizer. And I've always thought it was kind of funny because sometimes you'll get in the car you'll turn the key and nothing happens and that's because of the immobilizer in the car so what you have to do is press the button and it'll beep at you to let you know and then you can start the car and if you don't press that button or if you don't start it within 20 seconds then the immobilizer will kick back in and you can't start it so you only get to hear that wonderful sound if you hit the button first Another really nice thing about the 360s and more modern cars is, well, I've driven a lot of 360s and I never really question how they're going to drive. As long as they're, you know, functioning how they should, they all basically drive the same. Um, but that's fine. I mean, that's a more mass produced cars. Whereas the older cars, Daytona's, stuff like that, I can drive three of them back to back and they will all have their own unique little personalities to them. Uh, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing in a 360 because you, you know what you're going to get and it has the creature comforts that some of the older cars don't have, like the AC that actually works and blows cold and you can take this out on a hot summer day and know that, you know, your AC is going to do its job and not kind of be spitting lukewarm air at you. <laughs> Now this car does have the aftermarket radio in it, but it also has the original radio. So you get the best of both worlds because the old radios, they're fine, but a higher tech one is nice, especially if you're going to be driving your car and you want something where you can play your CDs or, you know, Bluetooth or whatever. But having the original is always a nice thing to have because especially when you go to sell the car or, or anything like that, having the original piece is always a plus. I mean, we have like a 308 right now and the owner has put uh, different wheels on it and they're a little bigger, which makes the car handle much better, but uh, he still kept the originals and they're being sold with the car, which is great because everyone wants the originals still with it. Factory original does matter, even if it's not on the car, because you're getting more performance out of it with the bigger wheels, but having the originals definitely helps.
Another one of the big draws for the 360 to potential buyers is the relative reliability and low maintenance costs of these cars, especially when you compare them to things like the Testarossas and the Boxers, which require a lot of labor for the cam belt service. You have to remove the entire engine and it costs well upwards of 7,000, eight grand, 10 grand. I've seen them be a lot more than that too depending on what needs to be done. But for the 360s, because the, the cam belt service can be done with the engine still in the car, it cuts down so much of that labor cost, making a basic belt service just a couple grand. And you know, say if you do the major service where it's belts and say it needs a water pump or any of the other usual things, then you're talking five grand, which is a lot less than other models. And with regular maintenance, you really only need to do the belts depending on how much you drive the car uh, roughly every five years. Less if you're driving it a lot. Uh, you can push it a little more if you really don't drive it a whole bunch, just do regular maintenance. But because the belts can deteriorate with time and cause damage if they do snap, I definitely recommend not pushing it too much past like six years. Uh, but on average, five years, you're great as long as you know it, you're not putting 15, 20,000 miles on a year. Like then you have to do it a lot more often. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe and stay tuned because we got a lot more content coming very soon.